So this is a project car. It's a 20, 20, it's a, yeah, it's a 2004 Ford Focus. Uh, it's a ZX3, uh, it's not an SVT model. Uh, I've had it since it was brand new off the showroom. Uh, so I really wanted to keep it so I can hopefully turn it into a, you know, a track car um, and put a little bit more on there that's, that's not really gonna work for daily driver use. Uh, but as you can see, it's running really rough right now. some homework I think it's the, actually the uh, ignition coil so I bought a new set of those so we'll go ahead and try that out and see if that fixes it um, if not we'll have to just run some more tests and see what's what's going on um, I'll show you the little scanner that I used um, it's a cool one that I bought off of uh, Amazon and uh, downloaded the uh, OBD2 app off of uh, the Apple Store and use the two together so roughly it came about uh, 30 bucks so let's see if you're able to hear this. It sounds so horrible. Yeah, yeah, safety first. When this started running really bad, it just reminds me of an old uh, VW Bug. So since it's 2017, I've had this car now for uh, 13 years. Yeah, 2004. Uh, fell in love with it right off the lot when I saw it. Um, when we used to have a lot more Ford dealerships in Southern California, now we don't. Uh, there was an old Ford dealership out in Downey, Downey, California. Uh, and there was this car sitting there in the, in the showroom. I uh, had custom wheels on there. Uh, was dropped a little bit. It was just looked amazing, and the second I saw it, I just you know fell in love with it. Uh, that's the same reaction I had when I saw the uh, RS come out back. Um, well, for the first time ever for us. Of course, we never got it over here, and uh, that's why I decided to keep this one. I mean, let's be honest, it's a 2004 Focus. With uh, it's not SVT, so you're really not going to get much for it. So why not? You know have some fun with it and uh, you know make it a cool track car so um, let me give you a quick tour just to show you what's been done uh, differently to the car uh, added a couple different things uh, just to change it up uh, but uh, for now yeah it's just uh, running really rough so let me take you around So the car I was talking about that was at the Downey Ford dealership, it wasn't this one. It, this one is what I ended up buying. It was a one at this price. Also since it was a manual transmission, which uh, no one really wanted, it made it pretty cheap. Uh, back in 04, this was about uh, uh, 9999 so it was $9,999, which was a really good price, of course, for uh, this is actually the 2.3 liter model that we got in California, which is really cool. The car came with hubcaps, so I was able to find some used uh, SVT wheels, which I love the look of it. If we go around the front, uh, you'll notice that actually the bumper is different. This is actually a European bumper. Uh, they didn't have as much crash, uh, well I guess it would be styrofoam in the front, so they were able to get much smoother bumpers which I absolutely fell in love with so the grill is also uh, European as well because uh, they didn't have turn signals their their headlights actually had turn signals built into them uh, not like the ones we had here where we had the turn signals into the grill which just really wasn't a good look for the car so I got rid of that uh, now as far as the hood, of course the hood is different too because that is a carbon fiber hood. Uh, since I did find it used, it was actually pretty pretty bad shape so I ended up painting it uh, the same black as the, as the rest of the car. 
and here it would be some actual uh, spray washer nozzles that go in there but uh, those are pretty hard to find over here let me show you under the hood so besides it being very noisy we have a Cosworth intake which uh, they really don't make any more parts for Ford that I've seen which sucks uh, luckily this one is since California is so strict so if any of you watching this live in California you know how much it sucks out here to customize any cars without it being a headache uh, this one actually has the sticker on there showing that it's allowed to be on there uh, also have the throttle intake the focus sport now it's FS works the same company they made a strut bar tower for this And that's pretty much it. Uh, the molding itself too is actually from SVT. When you buy the lower models, these are actually plastic, just like the windows you see here. Of course, uh, this car is gonna need a full detail, which um, I'll show you guys uh, how to do. Uh, since the car has been parked for about a year, uh, I have some new residents, as you can see there with all the spider webs. So I will have to uh, start getting rid of those guys. And as for the trunk, I just have a subwoofer unit, but unfortunately the uh, head unit I have is now uh, messing up, as you can see. Uh, this is an old Pioneer App Radio 2. So uh, this has to be replaced too if I want to keep that. This one actually lets you hook up apps to it, so if I get another one or a modern one, I can actually run that diagnostic app off of this so I'll have it built into the dash which again would be cool for a track days to keep an eye on all the stuff that's not available on the screen because as you see here all you have is the heat and your fuel and that's pretty much it uh, 138,000 miles on the marker so it's for a 13 year old car it's still kind of under mileage but uh, back in 2015 when the ST came out I actually bought that as a replacement for this car had that one for two years and in 17 ended up buying the RS since that's the one I really wanted to get so not much going on back here everything else is pretty much stock so let's go ahead and start fixing this car goes right in there. Go ahead and screw it back in. <clears throat> nice and snug, not too snug of course. And there you go, pretty simple. Just one bolt, pull it out, and go ahead and put the new one back in. And there's a clip back here that uh, you just push down on, and you can pull this little section out. So uh, I'll go ahead and finish up the rest, and let's start the car, and let's really hope this fixes it. All right, so all the new plugs are in, and I found a little interesting gift over there. I guess while the car was parked, there was some uh, mice looking around. So let's see if it starts up good. So now you 
can hear the engine is running smoothly again. I guess just one of the coils went out. Uh, ran me about uh, 120 bucks for a four pack uh, out of the AutoZone. So it has to do the job to make sure it's running. Again, this isn't a, really a daily driver, so it's just more for fun and uh, again, starting to convert stuff over to take it to a track more often. So, that's great. I'm glad this little project worked and now we can get it running again. put in the, the actual reader into the OBD2 sensor. Power on the car, but not start it. So there's power going through the, the Wi-Fi connector. You'll have your signal. Now you can connect it to the Wi-Fi so that they're talking to each other. And then you can go ahead and click the uh, connect button there. So if you do try this and you have any questions, you know, reach out to me so we can see about uh, making it work. But in this case, so we do have a check engine light on, so I will show you some of the cool part, but let's do the diagnostics first. Telling it to read the codes. So it tells you right there, four codes found. So mine were misfires in the cylinders. So, and as you can see here, it also tells you too that some of the codes aren't available because you'd have to go to a Ford dealer, uh, which is an uncommon. But uh, for now, uh, we'll go ahead and reset the codes and let the computer find them again if they are still a problem. All right, and as you saw, pretty simple. Now the uh, dashboard. Now you can see the dashboard light is off. So, simple as that. So let's show you the other cool parts about it, at least that I like. Okay, so we still got that other trouble code that's only a Ford thing, but uh, like I said, we'll deal with that afterwards. So you can see that you have this cool little monitor of how your RPMs are going. As you can see, since the engine's on, it's moving. You can see it moves with the car. So you do have your power torque, gives you an estimate of what you're running. You could switch over and you can do fuel economy, which, you know, not too many people are concerned about, especially if you're trying to turn this car into something you have fun with on the weekends. But if you are someone that is, you know, very conscious about how much fuel you're spending, uh, it tells you right here. Of course, the since we're really not running or driving anywhere, we can't really, you know, run too many numbers at the moment. But it tells you too what your estimated fuel cost is for the time we've been running or driving. So a lot of uh, interesting information. Uh, this is the part I like with the uh, intake temperatures, coolants. This is something you especially would want if you're running on a track and you know you want to make sure you're not overheating the engine, especially if you're just practicing. So this is pretty cool. So this one you have to add in more specific information, but again, it's a pretty cool option. So when you want to go back 
you just push down on the screen for a couple seconds and your little menu options part up. So I'll go back to the main menu. So that was the dashboard. These are your gauges. So these are something you can customize. If you had some sort of mount that you can put up you know, on your pillar. Uh, the cool part is it's a cell phone so you can buy you know, these cell phone holders that go into your, you know, on top of your dashboard uh, pretty easily, you know, online, they're pretty cheap. So as you can see, everything is moving because it is reading in real time what the engine's doing. Again, something really nice to have if you are, you know, tracking. Um, I would also imagine too with towing, you know, if you're someone that has to tow a lot of heavy equipment or horses or toys this would really come in handy make sure you're not gonna go ahead and burn out your truck same thing live mapping of the ot sensors engine monitor vehicle speed this one you can kind of customize okay and then also you have performance so same thing here just shows you how much you know, horsepower you're getting. I don't know how accurate this thing reads. Uh, I know this one when I dynoed it very, very long ago, uh, it only had about 130, 135. So, you know, once I run it a bit, maybe I'll be able to get a better reading. You can also do your quarter mile times. Let's go back. Data grid, just simply laying stuff out it even has your acceleration your G's the cool part is by using you know the the modern phones as they have all that equipment built in there so they take advantage of it which is really nice the diagnostics we already ran in the vehicle so you can put multiple vehicles on there if you have a lot of cars in your household uh, again besides having this as a tool for performance cars and fun cars you know you could still plug it into your basic cars just to run a diagnost diagnostic test and again the whole setup well minus the phone of course but uh it was about 35 40 bucks just depending on where you find the sensor and the app the app was 9.99 uh, i find it well worth it compared to having to buy a lot of other parts to make this thing work uh some of those aftermarket readers i mean they're just so expensive so i think this is a really cool option so that's the dash command i haven't used any other app so i know it can be used the the obg2 sensor itself can be used with different apps it just depends how you hook it up whether by bluetooth or wi-fi the reason i like this one though is without having an actual Bluetooth connection, I can even purchase an iPad and hook it up to that and put that in my dash, which would be really cool. Nice big screen that you can look at while you're driving. Of course, you only have a couple seconds to make sure that your gauges are working correctly if you're running on a track. So I find that option really nice.